Hello, welcome back to our discussion on the oscillator. So in our previous models, we have covered what an oscillator is, its block diagram, how it works, what's the difference between an amplifier and an oscillator. We also covered the concept of positive feedback and the negative feedback. And we also understood the feedback which is negative or out of phase that is with respect to input is employed in the amplifiers with feedback. And the feedback with a phase in phase with the input signal, which is called as a regenerated or positive feedback is employed to build an oscillator. So we just explained that uh, in the previous module, if you want to design an amplifier, you make sure the feedback is negative and uh, you don't make it oscillate and that's how you do it but if you purposefully wants to build an oscillator so we explain to you in the block diagram as shown for example right here uh, we don't have any external input rather you just uh, feed back the output signal back to the input uh, uh, back to the input as uh, of the gain block and uh, therefore you sustain two conditions for the oscillation. The condition one is that uh, the loop gain here that is a beta j omega magnitude of it is greater than or equal to one and the angle of a beta j omega is equal to exactly zero degree or two pi radians. 2 pi radians. Okay, so this is how we've seen. So this is about 360 degree. Okay, so having said that, when uh, these two conditions are met, which is called as Barca Hussein's, Barca Hussein's uh, criteria of oscillations, criteria of oscillation. And when you satisfy this two condition, you sustain an oscillation at a design frequency called omega that is equal to 2 pi f, okay? And uh, after, so if you are new to this channel and uh, referring to this particular module for the first time, make sure you go back and refer to our previous couple of models that we have explained about oscillator and its basic principle and the concepts of feedback because that's very important to understand the forward topics that we are going to cover. Now, having said that, the very first topic that comes to our mind here is to build a different kinds of oscillator. So we can build a linear oscillator or harmonic oscillators which are called as sinusoidal oscillators so they are basically used to build oscillator circuit that produces a sine waveform at a single frequency omega naught which is equal to 2 pi f okay so it doesn't have any uh, other frequencies rather than the desired frequency and the value of that frequency is determined purely by the uh, passives that you use to build the feedback network. Okay, so the very first oscillator in that category is called as LC oscillator, where we use inductor and the capacitor. So have a look at this schematic representation where you actually can see uh, we are using this circuit uh, so what we are doing here, we are using one capacitor and one inductor and they are connected in parallel to each other. So let's say uh, you apply a voltage across the capacitor and charge it with the polarity shown, positive here and the negative here. And after fully charging the capacitor, you uh, basically connect this fully charged capacitor to the inductor as shown right here. So what can happen? Or for example, you basically see that you charge the 
capacitor with the external voltage source with the polarity as shown. So negative up and the positive down. So as exactly shown right here in the schematic. And after fully charging it, you disconnect the battery that charged it initially. And after that, you see that in the capacitor, you have developed an electric field lines that is coming from positive charges to the negative charges. And as a result, you have electrons flowing or the current flowing actually, uh, the current flowing uh, in, uh, into the inductor. Okay, so when current starts flowing into the inductor in the direction as shown, you basically can see uh, your capacitor starts losing its charge. It starts, so the voltage across capacitor starts decreasing. At the same time, the property of the inductors is to oppose the sudden change in the current. Initially, it assumed no current, but now suddenly there is an increment in the current. So it starts to develop an electromagnetic field around it. And that electromagnetic field is actually uh, as shown right here. So here you can see that. So the voltage across the inductor is VL minus uh, L di dt, okay? So it opposes the change in current right here. And then after some time, you know, since uh, inductor also starts losing the its energy, this current uh, starts, uh, it, it's the current here. Uh, starts decreasing that actually then charges the capacitor with the opposite polarity as opposed to in the beginning so it, the positive charges up and the negative charges down and this process repeats this process repeats so basically what is happening here there is an exchange of energy between the electrostatic field and the magnetic field so first capacitor loses its energy, stores into inductor, and inductor then uh, loses its energy, stores into the capacitor. So assuming that there is no dissipative component or there are no losses into the circuit, which is impractically not true, but we assume, so you will have a pure uh, oscillation signal at a desired frequency, and those oscillations are undying. And dying means they are sustained oscillation. However, what you have is the there is a wire right here, and uh, the comp components itself are not ideal. There is a dielectric here, so there is a loss. The wires, there is a loss. Inductance has a resistance, so there is a loss. So therefore, your your oscillation will decay over a period of time. So it will start building right here. It will start. And then over the time, they start dying. So that is called as damped oscillation. This is called as damped oscillation for the practical LC circuit. Okay. So LC oscillator operates on the principle that your capacitor stores energy in the form of electric field. Your inductor stores energy in the form of an electromagnetic field. And here is the picture that you see your oscillation started out, but for a practical LC circuit, your oscillations will die over the time. So what is the principle, uh, how this circuit can be used uh, for different purposes? For example, to produce a sine wave, which, uh, which is not damped, rather it is undamped, uh, we will uh, have to provide or uh, use the gain of the transistor provided by a circuit, for example, transistor amplifier that will sustain the oscillation produced by the combination of L and C, despite there are losses due to the wires and resistances and uh, some non-ideal components uh, present there. So there are some formulas uh, we know that uh, here, the Xc represents the capacitance reactance, which is 1 over 2 pi Fc, and Xl represents the inductance reactance, which is 2 pi Fl. Fc is the frequency, the cutoff frequency, and Fl also is the cutoff frequency. So here, the Xc and Xl, how they vary with the frequency is shown in this graph. So Xl and Xc on the y-axis, and uh, omega equal to 2 pi on the x-axis. So here you can see actually this is this has to be a linear one, xl, 
that is uh, increasing with respect to frequency. You see, this is a linear equation and uh, this is like a parabolic nature, the xc, you have one over two pi c. So with the frequency increment, the reactance decreases, okay? So there is a point on this graph somewhere both reactances are equal to each other, xc equal to xl. But uh, the uh, left side of this point, you can see your circuit has a capacitive behavior. It means the reactance of capacitance dominates and xc uh, greater than uh, xl. And to the right of this point, you see the xl dominates, the circuit behavior is inductive and xl is greater than xc. And in the middle, somewhere, you both are equal to each other. So when such condition is made, you actually use this condition to derive the frequency of oscillation formula. So you write here, let's say Xc is equal to Xl, which is 1 over 2 pi Fc is equal to 2 pi Fl. So 2 pi and uh, these two gets cancelled actually, right? So, well, uh, you can actually, uh, just a second here, we see that. So, well, uh, in fact, the expression can be derived by equating the two parts, xc equal to xl, and xc is 1 over 2 pi fc, xl is 2 pi fl, and then by simplifying this, uh, we say the one is equal to, we take this part here, four pi f square x LC, and one over four pi LC is equal to F square, and then taking the square root of both the sides, we finally get this expression. So you have F equal to one over two pi LC. So select a value of L, select a value of C and you get your desired frequency of oscillation. So that's how this graph represents where you're at the frequency, you have a maximum energy and the minimum impedance. So how to implement the oscillation circuit? So here you actually can see we have used the transistor uh, in a common emitter uh, circuit configuration. This R and C are used for biasing, and uh, this is also for biasing. And then this is the feedback network composed of two inductor and one capacitor. And this kind of oscillator. So uh, there is a 180 degree phase shift provided by the transistor circuit as a amplifier. And remaining 180 degree is provided by the passives composed of L and C. Remember oscillation criteria. One of the oscillation criteria is to maintain the closed loop phase shift around the loop is zero degree. And here is a, another circuit called as call bits where transistor again provides a 180 degree phase shift and the feedback network composed of two capacitors and one inductor uh, provides the remaining 180 degree phase shift. So that's called as call bits oscillator. Okay, so I think we have explained this part and uh, we also understood what is the damped uh, oscillations uh, and uh, how it occurs and how to avoid it, right? So let me show you this next picture where you actually can find the LC oscillator. You open your uh, television set or your radio uh, where you are receiving the FM channels, you basically can see this is your uh, oscillator uh, components. This is the coil actually, uh, ferrite coil, and this is a capacitor. Uh, so that together, they are having a connection together. They are used as a tune circuit in your radio receiver. Okay, so that provides a clock also to the radio receiver. Here are again the circuits. And here, and the frequency of oscillation omega is equal to 2 pi f, which is 1 over root, uh, 1 over root LC. So here F0 is equal to omega by 2 naught, so which is 1 divided by 2 pi f square root LC. So LC tag uh, circuit is also called as resonant circuit tank circuit or simply tuned circuit is very commonly used uh, in the radio receivers uh, clock as a clock or as a filter to filter out the specific frequency of components, okay?
So remember, conductor storing energy in the form of electromagnetic field, capacitor storing energy in the form of electrostatic field. So hope you like this video. If you did so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this module with others for a wider reach and stay tuned for more engaging contents like this. Till then, wish you happy learning.